In Proverbs 31.10, I know you're all familiar with this. We know the scripture in Proverbs 31.10 where it says, A capable, intelligent, virtuous, beautiful, lovely woman. Now, who can find her? She is more precious than jewels, and her value is far above rubies or pearls. Now, we know in the King James it says, who can find, a, you know, the virtuous woman, right? So when you look up the word virtuous, it's the word chayil. And I know a lot of you have heard this, but you're going to hear it again. So chayil, C-H-A-Y-I-L. And so the Hebrew word to describe this virtuous wife means that, uh, let's see, it's also, it's, conf no, sorry, it's often used in connection with military prowess. She's a warring wife, mighty, excellent, wealthy, morally righteous, full of substance, integrity, ability, strength, like an army. That's how it describes a virtuous woman. It didn't say, I used to hate the, that lady, the virtuous woman, because I'm like, oh, Jesus. It was all about her doing housework. That's how I initially looked at it. I thought, that's all she's doing. I thought, I, I said, this is not me. I'm sorry. I mean, I like a clean house, but I, I just, I mean, it was just about sewing and cleaning. That's how initially when I read it, I said, I hate to sew. So anyway, so then when I started to study it out and I thought, oh my gosh, she's a warring woman. She, it's a metaphor really for the, the church of Christ in end days to be that warring bride. But, but the women that he's speaking about, it's nothing wrong for those of you who like to sew in it and do all that stuff and bake. But you listen, but it's, it's more than that. It's knowing that we are these women that will war, that will take a stand. We have strength in us. We're not backing down. You know, we're, we're women that will speak that thing. We're women that will fight for our family. You take the fight out of a woman, there goes her family. Right? So, so you know, we have to understand that, that we are commissioned to be this overcomer, this woman that's not there to just sit and play the piano uh, at Sunday school. Sorry. I mean, you can play the piano in Sunday school if you want, but that's not what we're called only to, right? We, we have a lot more going on. And so, um, Chael, again, means uh, skill, wealth, valor, a troop, a, a warrior. It's used over 100 times in the Bible, most often in a military sense. Now, she, she embodies strength. We embody that, that fighter at heart. We, that's a portrayal of a woman, that the way God described it. Is we're passionate. We're passionate for what we love. We watch over our family. We take care of our family. We want the house clean. We want to take care. We want our kids healthy and our friends healthy, right? But um, even uh, in the book of Ruth, before she was married, just so that if you're not married, you think it's only for married women, uh, um, Boaz called her. A, a virtuous woman. She wasn't married yet. So just so that you know, this is, this is for all the ladies here, okay? And so the devil hated women from the beginning. And let's face it, you know, the devil would love to take each and every one of us out. So you need to understand the enemy. What does he do to women? He criticizes, makes us feel less than, wants us to be in competition with each other. You know, they, they think that the way to get somebody to show their skin is to be sexual in a way that's, that's promiscuous, in a way that really what you're doing is looking for love. Right? And so in all the wrong ways. And God loves us too much to... That's why he says he doesn't want us to have sex outside of marriage. There's reasons for all this. It's not because it's like he wants to be this mean guy. But how many times are there relationships that have been so wounded because of, 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 of leaving? Then you have all... You know, there's a breakup. Then you have all these soul ties going on. And, you know, so God has a design for us. He's our designer. He has a design for us for, for healing our hearts. And to keep us from getting destroyed, keep us from being wounded. And so no matter how you've been beat down, the Lord, I'm going to tell you something, the enemy's goal is to turn us into a wrecking ball. But I'm telling you right now, God what's saying, you are world changers. Don't you dare let the enemy. And even wherever you're, you may be like in a bad situation right now or you don't know how you're ever going to get out of it, God sees the end from the beginning. He sees the end. He sees a beautiful picture of who you are. And how much he loves you. And he has purpose and destiny and plan. Don't you dare let the enemy steal that from you. So in closing, I just felt like I needed to really clarify this too. Uh, in Genesis 2.18, it says that it's not good that man should be alone. He says, I'll make him a companion of strength. Who, and uh, Well, wait a minute. He says, it's not good that man will be alone. He goes, I'll make him a help me. So it was really, a lot of people just thought it meant helper. 
right? And I've taught this here before, so those of you who have heard this, you'll hear it again. And it means to surround or aid, even with equal to power or strength equal to him. It means that there, we're a powerful force. It means that man should not be alone. So really what it says is, I'll make him a companion, a companion of strength and power who has saving power equal to him. Never meant, you know, like women usurp men or men usurp men. It's, it's, it, we have to honor and respect each other and walk together here. But, but, but God has called us, you know, how many of us are watchmen? We're really discerning. We watch and we're, you know, we can discern something for our household. That's what this woman in Proverbs 31 was doing. And so, um, you know, that's who we are. So I want you to understand you're not just a wife. You're not just a female. You're not just a, you know, a worker. You're, not ju you're a daughter of the king who sings and dances and rejoices around each and every one of us. So in Isaiah 52, amen? In Isaiah 52, 1 through 5, it says, Wake up, open your eyes, beautiful Zion. Put on your majestic strength. Jerusalem, the sacred city, says, put on your glory garments. Never again will the unclean enter your gates. We talked about gates earlier. Arise and shake off your dust. That's what we're doing today. We're shaking it off. We're getting rid of that stuff. And we're going to sit enthroned. Break off your shackles of bondage from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. And listen, if we're a daughter of Zion, we can't be captive. Because we're free, to, we're free women. Because in Jesus, in Zion, represents the, the free church. So the Lord is saying this, wake up. It's time. It's time to shake it off. Stop going by what you feel. Stop going by what your, you know, whoever said what about you, what your school teacher said about you, about what your, you know, your aunt said about you, what your mama said about you. Forget it. Lord, here's what you're saying about me, that I'm able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that I can ever ask or think according to that which works within me. Do you agree with that? And so the Lord is saying, arise, stir yourself up. We have to shake it off. You know, he gave us all a signet ring. He's saying, shake it off. Shake off the lies. Shake off the, 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 the attempts of the enemy to keep you in bondage because you're a warrior because you're strengtheners, you're birthers. Come on, what are you going to birth? What's your dream? What's your desire? I want you to pray right now. I want you to just remember, are there dreams that have fallen to the ground because you just thought there was no way, no way that I can ever accomplish that? Well, the Lord is saying today he wants to resurrect that. He, he'll give you a strategy in how to overcome. There are some of you here that really wanted businesses to flourish or to start a business and you're just too afraid to step out. Well, the Lord is saying, step out. The Lord is saying, now is the time. The Lord is saying, do not try to, see, we overthink things. We try to overthink things, and then we get God out of the equation because we're trying to understand what in the world he's saying. He's saying, I just said do it. I didn't say understand it. And so you put the first step in, and you start doing, and then he starts giving you the downloads, and he starts giving you strategies. And so there's, there's uh, people with such creative ideas here, singers, even designers. The Lord says, get back to work again. Get back to work. Now, those, there's one right in particular that the Lord is saying right now. You are saying, I don't even know what my dream is. I don't even know what I can do. I don't know who I am. Well, the Lord says, just wait before him. The Lord says, first of all, you have to understand you're a daughter of the king. You have to understand that I have given you vision. I have given you dreams. I've given you creativity. What's the thing that makes your heart sing? Right? right? Start with that. So, so again, I don't want these just to be words, another sermon. I want you to be a doer of the word. And I want you to say, okay, Lord, I'm sick and tired of being stuck. I'm sick and tired of staying at this place where I'm not, there's stagnancy. The Lord is saying, come on, we're breaking you out. You're not going to stay in that stagnant place anymore because the breaker is here to push you forward. What is that thing? Okay, you have to start somewhere because aren't you tired of just hearing messages? I don't want to just hear a message. I want to become. I want to do. I want to make that change. But see, we can only do so much, but then you have to say yes to it and say, you know what? I'm doing it. I don't care if it's just changing your look. I don't care if it's cutting your hair or dyeing it a different color. Do something. Make the change. Just say, Lord, I'm going to do it afraid, but I'm pressing through and I'm breaking out. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, Lord, I just thank you. Come on, let's stand. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for what you're doing in my life. Come on, let's just thank him. Lord, I just thank you. I want you to picture, 
I want you to see the shackles of fear of man, the, the, of fear of stepping out, of, of fear of being creative, of fear of, of just doing. I want you to see that fall off of you right now. Fall off. Lord, we decree it shatters that which is holding it back. Listen, when you were feeling so self, that low self-esteem because you didn't feel you looked good enough, the Lord says he wants you to see yourself through his lens. He says you're beautiful, you're capable, you're able. He, he, he's drawing you into that intimate place with him. That is, a, I'm promising you, that is the thing that's going to cause you to be delivered is waiting before the Lord. He's got this plan for each and every one of us. Not one of us is better than the other here. Not one of us. And Holy Spirit is just saying, say yes to him. Just say yes, Lord. I'll let you break it off. I choose to align with you and partner with you today to break off the shackles, to break off the lie of the enemy. Even a little, some of us might have little lies and the other, one, other ones of us have big, big mama lies. Well, we're going to break those lies in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the power of your blood. And I thank you again. We are putting tent pegs through our negative mindsets, through our fearful mindsets. Like JL, she took out the enemy. Well, we're going to take out the lies of the enemy again today in Jesus' name. So please write down later, what is it that you are going to take a step of faith and do? What is it? You have to do it. And then, uh, then allow the Lord to give you strategy. Because I'm telling you, God is saying this is our season and he's breaking us out of the old. The Lord is calling for the women that roar. He's calling for women that are like, I'm a voice and I'm not backing down. I'm not this weak little thing. I'm not this little lady that's going to stand behind her husband like this. No, or, or, or behind whoever. I'm a woman and I'm a voice and I'm going to speak the word of the Lord and I'm going to live my life to the fullest. No more limitations. No more limitations. No more limitations. I'm telling you, I see the Lord. No more limitations. Come on, I see the Lord. No more limitations. No more limitations. Listen, I'm speaking to myself because, you know, we all have our own limitations here. And so, Lord, I just thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.